Have you ever played a game to the point where you became so familiar with it that you think you could do it blindfolded? All right, guys, welcome to my blindfolded Mirror's Edge speedrun. This can be a pretty difficult game with a lot of precision jumps, but hopefully I'm here to give you a few tips that should help you out on your own run. First level, you literally just have to hold W, no other buttons. Do a little five Mississippi count in your head, hit jump, we should be over to the next one. Let's go. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi jump. And as you can see, we are uh, on. As it turns out, it's a lot more difficult than it seems. Now imagine if you had to play every game like this. I can't see fucking shit. Accessibility in video games is something that has been getting attention over the past decade, but an area where we still have much more to grow. A disability should not prohibit you from experiencing or give you a lesser experience than an able-bodied person. Thankfully, there's been an increasing amount of resources to aid in gaming with disabilities. Games are created to help with visual, hearing, or mobility issues, but in the grand scheme of things, these make up a fraction of a percentage of the games made each year. And more than likely, you've never heard of or played any of these games. I mean, why would you when you have thousands and thousands of quote-unquote normal games to choose from? That brings us to today's video. I was browsing around on Steam and saw one of my favorite games of the year, Tales of Arise, was nominated for a game award. And then I realized, oh yeah, those are a thing. A quick editor note, this uh, was recorded before those things actually happened, and now they have happened, so everything that I'm about to say was what I thought before the game awards were voted on. My curiosity brought me to the website, and I thought, eh, what the hell, and decided to vote through the categories. Although I pretty much assumed the Big Mommy Vampire game was going to win a lot of awards, I was still interested in seeing the other nominations. Slash R slash mildly interesting. Upvote. After voting for Deathloop for the 10th category in a row, I was brought to the Innovation and Accessibility category. This category was used for recognizing software or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. Okay, so we got Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon, not exactly sure why that's there. The Game Award for Innovation in Accessibility goes to... Forza Horizon 5. Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Clank, and The Veil Shadow of the Crown. The Veil instantly got my attention. It was the only game that I hadn't heard of and the cover art was beautifully designed. I looked up the game on Steam and found out that it is an audio based action adventure where you play as a blind princess. I listened to some of the trailer audio and was immediately encapsulated by voice acting and the ambient sounds. But with all my research, I still couldn't understand what the gameplay entailed. So rather than continue to assume, I went ahead and bought the game. What I I got was one of the most story rich and beautiful games of the entire year, all while not being able to see the landscape around you. Since this game's main focus is audio, I'll be using a lot of clips from the game to help with my explanation, uh, otherwise it'd be just me talking over a black screen with some dots. As previously mentioned, we play as a blind princess Alex who's set to move to her new home after her brother is named King. While traveling, her caravan is attacked. Hold up! Hold! Hold! My lord. What is it? Odetan riders from the northwest. How many? An army, my lord. Can we make the castle? No. They're on us now. Two arms! Two arms! Wait here, Alex. Uncle? After regaining herself, she stumbles across an injured shepherd who immediately leaves us to fend for ourselves. Friend or foe? You're highborn. You're not from the borderlands. And you? A shepherd. Where's your flock? In the bellies of barbarians. We are not foes, then? It would appear not. <laughs> I hear men approaching. Are they the King's Guard? Afraid not, girl. This is where we part ways. Good luck. Wait! I guess after a change of heart, he ends up accompanying us on our journey. Throughout the game, we travel through bustling cities and dangerous wilderness while meeting a plethora of characters on our quest to the capital. This is where we start to see the game shine. We can't see any of the environment, but I was able to vividly picture each area just the same as if I had traditional graphics. Cities were brought to life through the chattering of civilians, the hammering of a blacksmith, the calls of merchants, or the music coming from the tavern. Each city felt unique, a small village with farm animals, a port city with bells by the dock, or even just different music playing gave each town an identity that truly felt like you were traveling. Do you know this village? It's called Braga. 
But that's all I know. I've never been this far east. Describe it for me. Well, it looks like a village. Too small and out of the way for the horde to bother with. There's a smith, some cellars, an inn. This doesn't just translate to the cities, but every single place we travel. Heavy winds on a snow-covered mountain, the cold, echoey feeling of a cave, or rushing water from a roadside river. It's night. How long have I been out? I need water. I'll have to get to the river. Mornings are met with the bustling lives of townsfolk, while nights are met with the sounds of wind and crickets. Sorry, girl, for running off. What's a lame shepherd going to do against practice killers? I suppose I should thank you for coming back. I suppose you're welcome. Where sounds can't fully describe the scene, Alex will often ask the shepherd to describe it for her. I can see rivers down in the distance. Describe it for me. It's a steep climb down to the ferry dock, but the river will be our best hope of getting ahead of the horde. No, describe the view. The view? I suppose it's nice. Go on. The sun is setting. Beyond the town. The sky is red. I can't picture colors. The sky is like fire. It warms the clouds piled up like wool on the horizon. Yes. However, the light on the river has turned it into a riding serpent, burning its way through the forest. That is our path. Thank you, Shepherd. You're quite the poet. In a past life, perhaps. This beautiful writing helps paint an almost perfect image of the setting and adds context where needed. And besides the commentary between Alex and the Shepherd, we meet plenty of interesting individuals that make it feel like a real medieval setting. A hardened blacksmith, an unruly bandit, or a merchant who's a bit stupid. Actually, I'm looking to sell my cloak. Times is hard for me, too. Not sure what I could afford. A hundred copper? Ah! I mistook you for a fellow merchant. I see now that you're a highway robber. Why don't you just take my entire car while you're at it? I could also throw in what's left of my teeth, if you like. Each character feels like their own person, rather than just an addition to the story, and left me wanting to have more conversations and interactions. Audio aside, we need something else in the game to draw us in, otherwise it's nothing more than just an audiobook. That brings me into today's sponsor, Audible. That's a, that's a joke, I don't know how to read. I don't know how to pronounce this. Read it for me. Surprisingly enough, the gameplay is very engaging. Due to our lack of sight, we make use of sounds of the environment to locate items or points of interest. We have you coming north to south. You looking for something, child? I'm looking for healing supplies, dressings for a wound, and something for infection. The game is very much set up like an RPG. We travel to different cities, talk to its inhabitants, and have the ability to accept or deny quests. These quests allow us to earn more money that we can use to buy different equipment like weapons and armor. I have this sturdy sword for 30 copper. Press. I have this old hunting bow for 15. And this equipment is needed because we have a full-fledged and pretty in-depth combat system. In combat, we make more use of sound to see where the enemy is attacking from. Sometimes it's head on or from the left or right. Shall we play a little game? No. Strike me three times and you win. All right. Oh, and I'm going to move around this time. Uh, oh, excellent. Uh, ah, very good. We can listen for the type of attack to know if we can interrupt during the windup or need to wait and block before striking. Huh. Bloody hell. You need to vary your attacks, Theo. Alternate between the heavy overhead swing and the quick slashes. All right, Alex. You should be able to hear his heavy attack a mile away. You can counter that right after you block it. Uh. We hear the sounds of arrows or axes being thrown at us to know where our guard needs to be. Ah, they have bows. Ready your shield. Archers loose. Shh. 
We can hear our allies during a fight for an added sense of realism. There's even the ability to use magic when we're getting overrun by enemies or want to put out more damage. Oh, give you that. Fire. Audio cues also inform us if we're out of breath or on the brink of death. Combat can be pretty hectic at certain points, and it's super satisfying when you play a fight perfectly. But sometimes you don't want to get in a fight, so you'll need to use sound to sneak past camps of soldiers or packs of wolves. Oh, hell. The dead are coming out of the ground. Wait, Alex. They don't see you yet. I need to find the rift. Then move carefully. Of course, if that's not your style, you can just rush in balls blazing and beat the shit out of everyone. You take these RPG elements and then add them to the very well-written story and you have yourself a surprisingly complete game. The gameplay didn't feel recycled and I was looking forward to each encounter on my journey. There's some more elements to the story, but since the game's only about 5-6 to six hours, I'll avoid spoiling that for you. Now. As this is a game for both sighted and non-sighted people, we get to see even more accessibility options. For menus, each option is read aloud to us to know what category we are on. Press game options. Press spacebar to select an option. Your game options menu. For traveling and accepting quests, we are given prompts and told the corresponding buttons we can press. What do you think, Shepard? I think it's a good way to get ambushed by a cave full of thieves. Press spacebar to take up this quest. Alt key to pass. When purchasing gear from a blacksmith, all of its stats are read to us, how much it will cost, and how much copper we currently have. There's no ambiguity within the game, which goes to show the amount of testing that must have been done before publishing. Admittedly, I did have a couple of gripes with the game though. The story starts off pretty solid, but towards the later parts I was just kinda thinking, I get it. I don't get it. Additionally, you can take damage in the game and actually die, but it never feels like a true threat. I wish they would have implemented some sort of mechanic where if injured in battle you had to collect healing supplies from the town to cure yourself. This could also add to the audio gameplay where if you don't heal yourself maybe you swing slower, don't have the option for heavy attacks, or maybe you can't use your shield. Also sometimes the audio mixing is a bit off and it seems like some voices are either too loud or too quiet for their specific scene, but it's really only noticeable when you only have the voices and no other background sounds. Regardless of these issues, it doesn't detract from the fact that The Veil is a wonderfully crafted experience. Great voice acting, realistic ambient sounds, with engaging gameplay made for a game with actual depth, something that this medium has been lacking. It's a game that can be enjoyed for both sightless and sighted gamers and does a great job of making you use your senses. A point's made in the game for you to understand that while being blind is limiting, you are in no way helpless. They will be here in moments. They will not treat you kindly. I know. We'll leave together. I'll return to my seat in the Borderlands, if they will have me. If you leave, who will stay your brother's hand? Is he not your father? Your grandmother? You are the only hope for peace. Where are you going? They will never trust you as long as I am here. Don't you dare! I will return home and speak to anyone who will listen about what you did here today. Please, don't! I need you! Who will be my guide? You see more clearly than anyone I have ever met. Goodbye, Alex. I hope that this game garners more exposure because we don't often see accessibility games marketed onto the mainstream, and hopefully more titles will be created with these features in mind so that everyone can enjoy games to the same degree. If you have given the game a shot, let me know what you think. But really quickly, right here before we end, you've heard me talk about my partnership with Apex Gaming PCs, but we have ourselves an incredible deal for you this holiday season. Using my code TONY on Apex's website will actually get you 10% off a custom PC purchase, which in the grand scheme of things for a PC is quite a lot of money. 
The deal's actually gonna last until January 31st of 2022, but you wanna hop on this as quickly as possible because who knows when a deal like this could come around again. So if you are interested, make sure to click that link in the description. That's all I have for you today. I hope I'll see you here next time.